Good morning, America. This is the Professor Billy Mitchell coming to you from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. This is the very first video that we've done that's going to talk about how you can set up your race car and do very well at the racetrack. So we're going to call the actual name of this video Where the Rubber Meets the Track because this is literally where the rubber meets the road, where your tires are there. You should be taking tire temps, tire pressures, all this information, you gather it together and from there, from the driver's input, you can actually take and make changes to the car which are gonna be very beneficial to getting the car tuned in, okay? So the very first thing, learning objective. By the end of this video, you'll be able to take tire temps, you'll know the tools that are involved to take tire temps, and how to use those tire temps to actually make adjustments on your car to make your car turn better, especially turning left. We're gonna talk about the tools. Like I said, first tool we're talking is a barometer, okay? Barometer is right here. This is used as a fancy one. You don't have to buy this one. These are over 200 bucks. If you don't have the budget for that, you can get one that's that doesn't have a memory. I do suggest that you get a digital one with a barometer, okay? Because we're gonna show you here in a second how it's very important to have this little uh, probe on the end of here so that you can actually get core temperatures instead of surface temperatures. Which brings us to the second tool. The second tool. This is a little therm gun, okay? It's got a little laser on it. Wherever you point it, okay, is where it's gonna read the surface temperature. That surface temperature is 87 degrees. It's beautiful here in the garage right now. So these are great if you cannot afford or you do not have a pro barometer available. You can buy these at Harbor Freight. I think they're like 20, 25 bucks. The bottom line is though, it's only gonna give you surface temperature. So if you are going to use them for tire temps, you gotta get your tire temps right away. As soon as you come off the track, you should be doing that anyways. The sooner you get your tire temps, the better, more accurate they're gonna be so that you can use that information to actually dial in your car. Okay, second tool you're gonna need. You are going to need a good pressure gauge. Do not go down to O'Reilly's or where have you and buy one from your local you know, auto store. You're gonna need one that's very accurate, very calibrated, very reliable. Uh, this one's a long acre, they're not that expensive. I think I paid out under 100 bucks for this one. You can get them even cheaper. They put sales on them. Don't buy a used one. Um, I highly suggest even buying two of them so you have a backup. Uh, never fails, um, you know, they're gonna fail at the worst time. So you wanna have a backup to a backup. All these tools that I have with you, especially electronic stuff, I have backups. Because what happens is you get to the racetrack and the thing fails, then you're screwed. So you don't wanna be screwed. So you wanna be able to get your measurements, use your time wisely, you prepared, you spent a lot of time, you've made a lot of money to get to the track, you wanna use your practice time, your heat races, and even your main event to get max amount of data so that you're constantly improving your car, which will equate to lap times and doing better in the races, okay? So, next thing you got, you got a stagger gauge, or what we call circumference measurement device. You can use a quarter inch tape, some guys do that. I don't like to do that because if you have something on the tire, it's not gonna give you a good measurement. These tires, when they get hot, you come off the track, they're gonna pick up rocks, they're gonna kick, pick up all kinds of garbage. You'll see the cup guys scraping all that stuff off before they even do tire temps, okay? What you need to do is you gotta have a little stagger stick. You'll see on the stagger stick, it's got a little gauge on it. You just basically put the from tire to tire at about spindle height. Then you go through and read the measurement. This is gonna tell you stagger is very, very important on a race car, especially in the back of the car where if you're gonna lock up the rear end. Makes sense that the inside tire, the left side of the tire has to be at least a couple inches smaller than the right side of the tire. You're not gonna get away, you're not gonna get the car to turn, especially off the corner unless you have some kind of stagger. Typically what I do with stagger is I'll run half of whatever I'm running in the rear. What dictates your total stagger is the size of the track, how, how tight your corners are, okay? It's all radius thing when you go around the corner. You're gonna have to play around with that. That's something you can play around with. A lot of times you don't have the tires available that you need. When you go and buy your tires, they'll have them marked. I highly suggest you don't do that. You can still measure your tires without mounting them. You just measure them at the sidewall and you get a reference. Are they gonna measure what they are when they're it up? No, 
but you can go through and you can find out you know the differential between the different tires okay and you can get pretty damn close even before you mount them up because once you mount them up those tire barns they don't like to take them back okay so you want to make sure that you're getting pretty darn close you can use tire pressures to actually get to stagger where you need them you can use air you can use nitrogen we know nitrogen is not going to expand as much as it gets hot so you have to take that into account too okay the last tool most important tool if you remember today is your torque wrench for your lugs okay i highly suggest if you remember one thing out of today's video you need to torque your lugs on your car every time you go out before you go out there's two things that your crew must do or you must do one is set your pressures okay you're going to set your pressures wherever you want to start with put it on your tire you want to be consistent the other thing is you need to torque your wheels i've destroyed two cars in 30 years very expensive pisses you off just because the guys thought the wheels were tight and it comes out the battery was dead on the impact okay so use your to go buy a cheap one you can get one from harbor freight set it at 60 65 pounds it's close enough okay get yourself an extension a one inch socket I keep them together again have a backup okay I got backups to these in the trailer too all right so now tire temps this video is about tire temps we talked about the tools that you need now we're going to talk about how do you take tire temps okay we're going to start off with my pyrometer I'm going to go here with Michael, we're gonna sit this down here so you can see the tire and the gauge. We're gonna turn it on, it's gonna set. Now you'll see it automatically goes towards the right front. Okay, see it blinking there? It says 85 degrees. So we're gonna back out. I'm gonna to go to the right front. Back out a second a little bit there, Michael. So I'm gonna stab the right front inside tire, or excuse me, the outside of the tire. That's what it's asking for. So I'm going to stab the outside of the tire, hit read. Okay, now we're going to go to the middle. We're going to stab it. That's where the probe comes in. You're getting a more of a core temperature. You're going to read it again. And you're going to go to the inside of the tire. Okay. Now, you can do these. These are memories. This is digital. You can save it. Um, you can clear the memory. You don't need this nice of a gauge. You can use a, a cheaper digital gauge and have somebody write this stuff down. But always get in a habit of doing it the same way every time and having the same person take the temps the same, same time, okay? So you always want to start with the right front because the right front is the most crucial tire on the car. If you don't get the weight off the right front, it's going to screw up the rest of the corner because that's the first segment in your corner. That's your turn in. If you don't get your turn in right, the rest of the corner screwed. Okay, so you want to start with the right front, you go to the right rear, you go to the left rear, and then you end up at the left front. Okay, so you're going around the car. The sooner one you do first, uh, whichever one you do first is going to be the most accurate one. Okay, so let's take a look at some temps. Let's look at an example. I'm going to show you, I told you guys last weekend at the bullring where we ran the modified here. And it's basically we're starting over. We tried some bump stops. We talked about the physics involved here are exactly this, okay? Wherever you have a bind situation or you have a resistance to movement, we call that dynamics, right? Right now the car is sitting at static. It's not moving, that's at static height, okay? But when you go on the track, as soon as you hit the brakes, all 2,600 pounds gonna go to the front of the car. Okay, that's called dynamic effect or dynamic height. Then we want the front to come down because we're gonna lower the center of mass or lower our, our moment, what we call our moment. And we're gonna lower that and we also wanna load the left tire, okay? So how do we do this? Well, let's look at our time to temps here, okay? Let me grab this little thing here so I can point at it. So let's, let's start off with the right front. This is the inside. If you're looking at the car, this is the front from a top view. This is the inside of the tire on the left side, 152. The middle is 151, and the outside of the tire is 139. The average, if you add those three together and divide it by three, you're going to get 147. See, I circled it right there. Your tire pressures went from 20 to 28. That's pretty big build right there. That's telling you that that tire is getting warm because not only is the tire getting hot, but whatever air or nitrogen you're putting in there is getting warm also, and it's going to expand, which is going to also 
increase the circumference of the tire. So not only are you getting the tire hot, but you're gonna be messing with the stagger, which increases the, uh, the height of the tire, which is also gonna affect your cross weight in the car. So you have a lot of things going on here all at once, and it all affects the same way. So we go to our right rear. We got a 149, 140, 9, 133, the average is 144. I can tell you when I drove the car, the back of the car typically works mostly coming off the corner. I can tell you the car was great coming off the corner. You see these temps, the left rear is a little bit warmer than the right side, that's perfect. Ideally, I can tell you from previous experience, when you get the front of the car the same, where the average in the left front's a little warmer than the right front, this car starts breaking track records. It's gonna turn, it's gonna pivot off the left front, and it's gonna do it for 40 to 50 laps. So this is ideal. What we wanna do is we wanna load this left front tire, which we are currently not doing. You can see this, it's only the average is 128. So what caused this? Okay, so what caused this, I told you guys we put some new bump springs on it. The bump springs were actually holding the car up. As soon as it hit the right front, it was right front dependent, which means it's gonna hit it first. As soon as it did that, it never compressed and allowed the car to go down to its full dynamic height, where on the, this car, it's about anywhere from a half inch to a quarter inch off the track. So what did that do? That created a bind situation in the right front. It cooked the right front tire. I can tell you, I drove the car, I led three laps, and then it just started shoveling the nose and killing the right front tire to the point where the tire said, no, 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 we ain't gonna play no more. And then at that point, you're kinda you know, doing whatever you can to mitigate the, the issue, but it's still gonna be there. So how do we fix this? How do we take weight off the right front? Well, the first thing is we need to make sure there's no bind. I can tell you, for, again, you want to double check part of your preventive maintenance on the car, especially if you've got together with somebody or banged wheels. You need to make sure that no ball joints, no tie rods, anything, uh, himes, anything is binding up. You want everything great, but you do not want a bind situation. If you get a bind situation, what's going to happen even with your sway bar is it's going to cook that tire and your car will not turn, okay? So how do we fix this? We know we didn't have a bind situation. We went and looked at the travel indicators. We didn't get the travel that we wanted. So how we fix it is we're gonna change the springs in the front of the car, especially in the right front. We're gonna change that spring. I'm gonna cut the rate. Uh, rate is actually how many pounds it takes to compress that spring an inch. So if you got a 500 or a 1,000 pound um, spring, it means that you are going to compress that spring or put load on it 500 to 1,000 pounds to get it to move an inch or compress an inch. Next video, moving forward, I'm going to show you a Raider or what we call a smasher machine where you put the shocks in the machine and it's going to actually tell us what the rate is for that given spring and what the load numbers are at dynamic height. I'm gonna show you how to set your dynamic height on my car, and I'm gonna show you on what we're gonna start out with next week, and it should be pretty darn close. I can tell you based off my notes and experience that the new springs should be pretty close, okay? They're very close uh, rate-wise to the other style of bumps that we ran. They should be good to go. All right, so that's about it for this video. We talked about tire temps, if you guys want to send me your tire temps, I can help you mitigate what the problem is. Um, you can send them to me. Um, you can also find me on Facebook, friend me. I'm going to friend you back. Please like and share. That's very, very important because that increases how many people can see it. And it also helps out the channel, okay? So like and share. Um, if you guys didn't know, I did a video yesterday with On Pit Road Racing with Gene Woods's. Um, TV channel with Mike Fox. Please check that out. There's a lot of great information there. Um, it was a great interview. We talked about the channel. I am going to be posting some of these videos on their TV channel so you guys can see it there. So with that said, I hope everybody has a great weekend. We have the weekend off. I'm going to do some serious hot tub time, a little barbecuing. Um, enjoy the, the great weather we're having and I hope you all have a great weekend. I hope to see you at the races.